What's going on? It's James back here with yet another tech tip video and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to test for continuity using a basic cheap multimeter like this one here. Now this is going to be a useful technique for any of you hobby mechanics out there, even the diehard I hate electrics and I don't want to have anything to do with them guys because I was that guy until of course I realized resistance was futile. Get it? Okay, okay, now you've all recovered from intense bouts of laughter. Let's take a look at what continuity actually means. Well, it basically means have we got a circuit or not? And specifically when we're using a multimeter like this to test for it, could electricity flow between these two probes here? Let's take a closer look. So to set this multimeter to test for continuity, we need to first make sure we've got our probes plugged into the correct socket. So the black one here, this always goes to the com or common socket there. The red one, we're going to push into the volts, ohms and milliamp socket. Like that. The one above it is measuring for large amounts of current and we don't need that today. So now we've got our probes in the correct sockets, we're going to turn the dial on the multimeter down to the diode symbol. So that's that one right there. Some people do use the resistance scale to the left of that to measure for continuity, which you can do. But I'd suggest if you're a beginner, which I'm guessing you are if you're watching this video, that the diode is going to be your easiest option. So now you've got the multimeter set up correctly. Here's how this function works. So if you have continuity between these two terminals here, you should get a reading of close to zero. And this can be confirmed by touching the two probes together like that. And as you can see, we've got a reading of zero, zero, 001. So that confirms a circuit. If I separate the probes, we get this one reading. That means no circuit. In other words, electricity cannot flow between these two points here. Now, a real world example of how you'd use this would be testing a fuse. So I've got a fuse here out of the MX-5. It's good. I know it is. So when I test it, I expect to see a reading of close to zero. So one probe on that blade there, the other probe on the other. And there we go. We've got a reading of 001. So that confirms the circuit and this fuse is good. If you were getting the reading of 1, that would mean no circuit and you'd be dealing with a blown fuse that needs replacing. So that's one real world example of how you'd use this function. Now what I'm going to be using it for today is to help me in my charging circuit rewire in the MX-5. So let's go take a look at that. And I basically need to confirm that the two wires running from the plug at the rear of the alternator go to where I think they do, behind the dash here. Because if you take a look under there, there is a lot of wires. And before I go cutting and splicing, I need to be sure that I'm working on the correct wires. Now, before I attempt any testing, I've disconnected the battery because we're testing for resistance here, not volts or current, so there's no need to have it connected. And it also eliminates the possibility of me shorting something out. So that's disconnected. Now I'm going to start at the grey and red wire from the alternator. So I've looked at the wiring diagram and I suspect that's running to this big blue connector under the dash here. So I've glanced under there and yeah, okay, I can see a grey and red wire going to that terminal. So I'm quite confident I've found the correct wire, but let's be 100% confident. So I've crimped a spade onto the end of some electrical wire and then pushed that onto the terminal at the alternator end, the terminal that corresponds to the grey and red wire. And then I've run the wire back into the cabin here and that's basically to get the two ends closer to each other because the probes on the multimeter will not reach that far. And then I've also crimped a female spade onto the end of the piece of wire and that's going to allow me to push the black probe into there like that so I don't have to hold it in place. And now I just need to switch the multimeter on and then push the red probe into the terminal I believe to be the correct wire. There we go, and as you can see, we've got a reading on the multimeter of zero. So that has confirmed that that wire under the dash goes to where I think it does, 
to the alternator. That's good news. Now, for the sake of the experiment, there's a green and red wire back there, which looks very similar to the gray and red wire. If you were colorblind, it'd probably look identical. So let's test that one in the same way. So there we go, we've got a reading of one on the multimeter. So that means no circuit. And if we didn't already know which the correct wire was, we'd have to keep looking for it. So now I'm gonna repeat this process with the gray wire coming from the alternator. So I'm gonna to nip to the engine bay, swap over that spade connector to the other terminal, come back in here and then repeat this process in exactly the same way. Right, I've swapped that terminal over and I suspect I know where the gray wire is running to under here. So I'm gonna test it. And there we go, that's confirmed by the reading on the multimeter, which is zero, that's great. So now I've isolated the two wires that come from the alternator and I know exactly where they are running behind the dash here. So I'm free to cut and splice as I see fit without having to worry I'm working on the wrong wires. And that's it for this tech tip, quite a simple thing, but really useful when you start mucking around with wiring harnesses and things like that, which if you're working on cars, you will have to do eventually. You can't put it off forever, trust me. I tried so there you go if you like the tech tip don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more of this stuff subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with any future uploads thanks and i'll see you for the next tech tip